Well, hello there. My name is Joe Ramirez, and my wife and I have a ministry called Revive LA. We are currently meeting in the courtyard in beautiful Pacific Palisades at Palisades Lutheran Church. That's our mother church. Um, so thank you for that. We're still a part of the leadership, so we're actually, that's, we're, we're one church out there, and we just love um, our friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. So we are in the middle of a pandemic. And to make matters even more pressurizing, to put more anxiety on us, we are about to celebrate Christmas and then New Year's is coming up. And uh, there's a lot of pressure to, I don't know, gifts. There's pressure for, um, you know, having to even engage with, you know, maybe relatives um, and that, uh, that normally maybe you don't get along with. But it's definitely a different time, definitely a different time. Uh, a lot of us are staying home. We have to stay home just because of, um, you know, stopping to, you know, help uh, stop the spread of the of the coronavirus. So we get to enjoy at least whatever we want on YouTube. So I got a fireplace back here and I have um, the Christmas tree. I just love decorations and this particular season. In fact, it kind of goes too fast. But I want to talk to the seeker. Um, the person who's curious, maybe the person who um, who's actually never uh, been brought up in religion, never been brought up with a relationship God, uh, with God. And by the way, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with religion. There's religious aspect to, to some of the things that I share through my own personal te testimony and experience. But this is not religion. This is not religion. This is lifestyle. This is you living, so think of it that way. So if you um, are skeptical, I, I, I was too. You know, I used to, you know, listen to, uh, hear my wife listening to sermons. She used to pray a lot, and a lot of times I used to criticize that. Like, you know, what is, what is, uh, you know, what do you, what do you get out of all of that? And I gotta tell you, after going through a lot of pain, a lot of pain, and by the way, pain is actually a good reason why people change their whatever they're doing that's causing the pain or they just want to get out of, of whatever it is. It's because of pain, whether it's emotional pain, financial pain, uh, headaches, uh, you know, physical pain, whatever it is. A lot of times we don't change unless the, um, the pain gets uh, so great we just can't handle it anymore. That's what happened to me. I, you know, I had to get into recovery. I um, st struggled with uh, alcoholism. So on the road to recovery um, through a higher power, I learned. And I think all of us would admit, you don't even have to be in recovery to really kind of just examine, observe around you that there's something bigger out there, something much, much bigger. And no matter what we do externally, right? Uh, TV and society and culture will kind of have it, so much influence on us, especially with the, te the technology, uh, information so fast, so much influence on us that we are actually um, highly, we get high suggestions or it's highly su suggested that if we buy this, you know, this will make us feel better, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whether it's, it's clothes or, um, or if we're to get in a, re a relationship of a certain type, you know, um, you know, things, career, just on and on and on, that we do a lot of things externally to try to make us feel better, might make us feel whole and complete, and yet it still doesn't work, right? Maybe temporarily. I mean, we're happy when we get something brand new, right? I mean, I'm happy when I, I don't know, buy a, um, um, you know, a good, um, you know, a, a very fashionable shirt or something. I mean, I mean, I feel happy about it, but that's not going to make me feel better in regards to my life. And, and to make matters even, I, I think even a little bit more confusing, I think there's also a lot more criticism uh, on Christians also more so than ever, right? People are criticizing Christians for either supporting, uh, you know, a, a particular candidate, you know, in, in presidential and politics gets really, really, um, I, I don't know, it, it's kind of heartbreaking, actually. Um, you, you see all this criticism, so it's like, my, my goodness, I don't know if I should, you know, follow that. 
And also, I think, though, that some of the criticism, criticism is actually warranted, right? I think that some churches and some Christians in, in, in certain circles, and maybe um, they didn't realize it, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but they've made, feel pe they've made people feel unwelcome. Right? I, I felt unwelcome in a lot of churches or in, in a lot of fellowships. I just felt unwelcome, which is why it's so important, so important for, for you to realize that um, one of the first steps and one, and one of the strongest things or a thing that I strongly emphasize is you, for you and I encourage you to have your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ and turning your life over to Jesus Christ. Um, you, you have to start off thinking that way because I, I was raised Catholic. I got to tell you, by the time I was 18 and I joined the military, joined the Marine Corps, I had no idea what it meant to have a relationship with God, a relationship with Jesus, let alone embracing the Holy Spirit to guide me. You know, it was very confusing um, time I, I, I had anyway my first 18 years first 20 years of life but you know as I said it wasn't until you know big pain 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 that I started seeking this so here's here's uh, some fun facts um, for you to kind of just take into consideration here as to why this is actually um, beyond almost comprehension this is almost beyond comprehension um, um, miraculous actually and that is um, the Bible itself the Bible itself which is sort of the roadmap of life as Christ as Christians this is our our guide right uh, the Word of God speaks out uh, to us from the pages and the scriptures and gets into us as we read depending on what we're going through sometimes we get different things at different times did you know that it's still the number one best-selling book of all time in the history of mankind? It's still n the number one bestseller. I say that um, because there's been many, 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 many millions of opportunities for other books to supersede that, right? We have a lot of self-help books. We have a lot of psychologists out there, psychiatrists, a lot of experts writing about how to do life in such a way that you're gonna be fulfilled, you're gonna find your purpose, that you're gonna feel great, and so on and so forth. No other book outsells the Bible. That alone within itself, if you think about it, is huge. It, it, it's almost miraculous that it's still, still the number one best-selling book. And why is that most important, at least for me, is because there must be something to this. There must be something um, to this. And it's almost um, divine, right? And this is a, it, it's, it's, um, it, it's beyond comprehension. Here's the other thing, that it was also written over a time span of 1,600 years before Jesus um, was born and a little, about 100 years after Jesus was born with 40 different authors from, you know, kings, shepherds, um, um, of, of all backgrounds, um, wrote the Bible with, with a central theme of God. God is, um, God is real. Jesus um, was God in human form, and that he, he died and he rose again three, day, three days later and then eventually ascended to heaven. And let me stop right there for a second. It is an archaeological fact. It is absolutely true that Jesus, there was a man named Jesus that walked the earth. That was also fascinating for me. You know, you, I have this vision, and I used to see this um, person on the cross, nailed to the cross um, in certain churches. And I would think to myself, and I'm like, did that really happen? And, and also, why did he die for me, you know? I used to think, I used to have these thoughts. Well, it's actually true that there was a man named Jesus and he did walk this earth. He was beat up, he was crucified, and he died. And there's archaeological evidence that three days later, he rose from the dead. There was witnesses. That, <laughs> it's miraculous. I mean, it's miraculous. And... 
we still tell time after Jesus' death. Every time we write, um, used to write a lot of checks, now we punch in our credit card when we pay for stuff, and we put a date, or even a date now, 2020, December 18th. <laughs> We're marking the time after Jesus' death. We still t we tell time worldwide after Jesus' death. That right, that right there is just like huge, 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 huge. And finally, and there's all sorts of things that, at least for me, just convinced me that I need to look at this really, really closely, was why did he die for us? Why did a man named Jesus, as per scripture, as Bible tells, he was God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God is with us, why did he die for us? And I really didn't have appreciation for that until I was in the military. We, we were going through uh, another conflict um, in the Middle East. And I heard about a soldier who jumped on top of a bomb. He absorbed it. And he did that because he was inside a Humvee. And there was other people inside the Humvee. And after he called out and said, hey, there's a grenade in the Humvee. No one heard him. And finally, he just jumped on it. Died instantly and absorbed because he absorbed the impact. And he did that because he um, gave the other... Um, soldiers that were in the Humvee an opportunity to live, right? Because even by him jumping on it, it could have caused um, harm. Uh, maybe he, you know, jumped on it and, and still was able to harm the other soldiers. But he did that so that they can have the opportunity to live. That is the same thing, um, but actually a much more brutal way because um, the soldier died instantly. Jesus died a slow death. That he died so that we can have the opportunity to live. Ah, now, now we're getting somewhere that, that he died so that we can have an opportunity to live. Live our life, live our life to the full. Okay, so then, if that's true, then let's dive in a little bit deeper. And how does that really affect me now, this very moment? Well, we have a tendency to... Um, I just don't like using this word a lot, but it's just true. This is going to be true to the gospel, is that we sin a lot. We sin every day, whether it's in our thoughts, in our actions, our behavior. Um, and we can carry that around with us, right? Guilt, shame. And that's a, that's a tough way to live. And especially if you're going through a really rough time and and you've, you've done some things so that you can feel better that probably weren't good for you. Or, um, you know, you've had arguments, you've had disagreements, or you cheated in some sort of way. I'm not necessarily saying, you know, people out there who, who you know, specific, specifically have done that in, in a marriage. I'm just saying that there's some bad stuff that you probably have done, whether it's in your mind or, or physically, that... that that really bothers you, well, in order for us to have the opportunity to live, Jesus said, hey, all this sin, all this, this shame that you feel, I want you to put it on me. I'm going to die for you so that you can have the freedom to live without that, being covered by what we call grace, right? Grace is actually undeserved favor. We don't even deserve this at all, right? So Jesus died on the cross. Took, hey, look, it's almost like someone um, who's getting ready to get sentenced to life or even sentenced to death in a courtroom, and a man steps in named Jesus and says, hey, look, I'm going to take this guy's punishment. I'm going to take this guy's punishment. That's what it's like. But you have to turn your life over to Jesus to experience that and to be saved. It's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. So what does it also mean to be saved? Meaning that we have a place now in heaven that our time here on earth, which is 
probably um, or is very temporary, although it doesn't feel like it. We Sometimes it feels like, oh my gosh, you know, it's been here quite a bit. You know, I got another 20, 30, 40 plus years, depending on where you're at, maybe 50 years. Um, I want a place in heaven. I want to, I want to, I'd like to believe there's just something beyond this, just pure happiness, that's heaven. But to get there, I got to turn my life over to Jesus. I know that I'm covered by grace. I have salvation. I don't live to have, um, you know, these just horrible things that just bother me, this guilt. And I'm covered. I'm covered by grace. That's a really, really, really wonderful, actually a loving um, opportunity um, that we have by having a relationship with Jesus and God. Okay, so does that mean, does that mean that we can do anything we want then? We do anything we want. Well, no, because I think that if you are truly accepting Jesus in your heart, you've truly changed your, um, you, tr you, tr uh, you truly have turned your life over to Jesus, that that's where the Holy Spirit uh, starts working. And eventually you'll start saying, you know what, I don't think I should be doing that. That's going to be harmful for me. I, even though the Bible says, hey, you know, that is... Um, that's the sin, okay? They're right. I said it again. But you yourself will develop that conviction. That, that you'll be convinced to say, "I can't do that." It's it's going to, it's going to be harmful for me. Actually, the way I want to live my life is actually servicing others. I'm beginning to turn my life and attention over to others rather than self. So we can, that's pretty deep, and you can get into all of those. But I'm just here to, to, to testify, you know, through personal testimony throughout my journey. I set out to be a preacher, a teacher, or be uh, a musician on the worship team, being at a church, um, being a pastor. My wife and I are, cons are, are considered contract pastors. Um, we didn't set our journey to be that. We were actually called. We felt this gravitation. So I'm here to say this to you. That what else do you have to, to lose? If anything, you have everything to gain, right? By turning your life over to Jesus. This is a really cool existence. It really, really is. And it doesn't mean that everything is better all the time. We will still have seasons of ups and downs. And one thing I've learned in this journey that we call life is that nothing lasts, right? Nothing lasts, right? You go through a bad patch in your life, that doesn't last. You go to a really good patch, that doesn't last. No. Certain seasons have different lengths of time. And each and every step of the way, you learn that you'll, you'll, you'll begin to realize that you've learned a lot through your past experience. And if you don't, God has a way of bringing stuff to you until you learn your lesson. That's another kind of cool thing, that you get to do life better. You get to find your calling. You get to find your purpose in Jesus Christ. So the way to do this is right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity, give you the opportunity right now to turn your life over to Jesus. I, I, I can't emphasize it enough. It's a really wonderful, wonderful way to live, right? So all you have to do is follow along with me in prayer because I might get off track a little bit in, you know, in a particular regimen in the way I'm speaking, but the but the prayer is still the same in this way that you are going to be turning your life over to Jesus by praying with me, okay? So, here's, so here, here, here we go. Heavenly Father, I know that I have not always done things that are right. In fact, I'm a sinner. At this time, I want to turn my life over to you turn my heart, my entire life over to you. And I accept you and I make you, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. So I'm accepting you into my heart, Lord, and I'm making you my Lord and Savior in your only precious name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you can begin your journey. And I'd like to hear about it. Just go to our website at revivela.net and send me an email. Or you can also just send me an email direct at joe at revivela.net. Joe at revivela.net. 
I want to close with this. One of the most beautiful things, there's like so many beautiful things to being a Christian and following Jesus, is that you're never alone. Ever been in a room, a ton of people, and you still feel alone? You ever feel like, you know, you're next to your spouse, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and you kind of feel alone? You're going through a problem at work, you got a bunch of people in your car, I can just go on and on with the scenarios. But sometimes we just feel alone no matter what. But in Christ, how many believers Jesus? We don't. You have an opportunity to say, hey, Jesus, man, I am not feeling, I'm not feeling this, Lord. Please, can you help me out here? And by the way, thank you. I praise you in your name. I praise you that I, everything I'm going to do is to glorify you. You can get to that point later. But my point I'm making is you're never, never, never alone turning your life over to Jesus. Amen.